If y'all look real close, you're gonna see these uh these specks on the ground, these white specks on the ground. And that's the uh that's the urea, and there's the other uh, fertilizer buggy. I just got it stuck on the back of my truck and uh, I dragged it across the field. And uh I got good coverage across the field. You can see the little white spots everywhere. Uh, I got about a 75% chance of it raining on a uh, Wednesday. And so I went ahead and got this uh, field fertilized. Uh, I got the uh, the field at home fertilized too. Uh, the other ranch, I got it fertilized. And uh, this morning I actually had an animal that was sick. And so uh, I had the animal put away in the, uh, the preconditioning pen and uh, I took her temperature. Uh, I was like, something ain't right with this one. And so I took her temperature and she was uh, burning up a little bit. Uh, she was running a 103.2. And so I went ahead and gave her a, a dose of banamine. And I also gave her a shot of enrofloxacin. Uh, it's the animal that was uh, that got the shot of Zactran a little while ago. Uh, she's still not doing good. So uh, I went ahead and I got her a, a shot of uh, Tenetril. I gave her a shot of enrofloxacin. And then I also gave her a dose of banamine. And the good news is, is that as, as I was leaving, I was taking a look at her and uh, she uh, she looked like she was doing better. Uh, she looked like she had already started doing better. And so that's good. Uh, I, you know, um, I'm just going to keep an eye on her. And I got a lot of uh, uh, urea on the field. I just put straight urea on the field. I got a 75% uh, chance of it raining on Wednesday. And so... Uh, you know, I really need some rain. Uh, the ground is so dry that, uh, you know, uh, even uh, uh, back in my other ranch, uh, the uh, the ground is so dry that the grass only really grows for about, a, you know, maybe about a week. And then it stops growing because there's no moisture on the field. And uh, for this uh, urea, for it to work, I need to get some rain on it, too. And so, uh, you know, I was thinking about this earlier today. But, uh, you know, the thing about me right now is that... Uh, you know, um, I was thinking about this, but, you know, I'm about to start making a lot of money. All right. Uh, you know, the thing about me is that I've kind of hit this part of like uh, this point in my life where uh, when I actually take a look at it and I just take a look at it, uh, I take a step back and I take a look at it. I am about to start generating a large sum of money. I actually believe that uh, I will be buying a new field uh, probably within six to nine months, something in that range. I'll actually be looking into buying a new field. I'll get myself a uh, a, uh, a non-payment agreement uh, on a different field, and uh, I'll be working on getting myself another field. And it'll take me maybe uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna start getting uh, I'm gonna start getting uh, that ready too. And so uh, and I've and I've always said this that in terms of uh, my reality, like when I take a look at it for what it is, at the end of the day. I mean, uh, I know that this is, uh, you know, uh, I've always said that, uh, you know, in reality, you know, when I take a look at it, I mean, some a lot of people are just uh, idiots or pricks, right? I mean, I'm not saying everybody's a prick and I'm not saying everybody's an idiot. I'm just saying, uh, you know, if you take a look at it for what it is, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and when I talk about my life, uh, you know, when I'm going about my way, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm doing what I need to do and et cetera, et cetera. And if I run into a prick or if I just uh, run into an idiot, I just uh, I leave them for dead. Right. I talk about this all the time. I don't uh, I'm not uh, I'm not in here. To, I'm not here to save people. Right. I'm not here to, uh, you know, I'm not here to, you know, uh, I don't save people. Right. Uh, I mean, you know, I hope that you find God. I mean, legitimately, uh, sincerely, in all sincerity. Oh, dang. Uh, I think I actually hit this thing and then I knocked it over. I'm not sure, but uh, uh, maybe I hit it and I knocked it over. But uh, it's a little uh, post in the ground. But, you know, me uh, just, you know, I don't I don't go around saving people. Right. I mean, uh, I don't save people. Uh, you know, uh, it's not, uh, you know, I, I sincerely hope that one day you find God and you find your peace with God. And uh, then uh, you, uh, you know, uh, you know, and but if you're an idiot and uh, or you're a prick, uh, I mean, I just I don't save people. OK, uh, that's how I deal with it. You know, I'm not you know, I'm not saying that that's uh, the most uh, whatever, uh, you know, um, God knows. Uh, and uh, but me at the end of the day, I still I sincerely hope that uh, you find your peace and uh you know, uh, you know, uh, and not be an idiot. Right. And so. uh when I take a look at everything that I got going on, uh, I'm just going to be straightforward, honest about it. Uh, there's no reason to be bashful. I've always uh, said that in terms of my reality, like when you, uh, you know, look at me and uh, you know, I'm not saying look at me, look at me. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to, you know, I've always said that me in terms of uh, in terms of how I do things. I mean, uh, you know, I don't uh, 
I don't think that uh you know uh, you know what they call it flexing right I don't I don't really uh, I don't believe in that stuff uh, you know I don't go and buy myself a Ferrari right I don't go and buy myself a Lamborghini uh, you know uh, I'm in a situation as of right now though uh, where uh, the amount of money that I'm going to start making is is going up on a vertical scale I'm doing very well for myself uh you know, I've managed to do very well for myself, and I would actually anticipate that within about six to nine months, I end up buying myself another field. And so I would actually anticipate that within about nine months, uh, within about nine months, I will actually be in a situation where I will start looking into, you know, tying up another field on a on a non-payment agreement, get myself a uh, about a, uh, you know, six months, about a one year running head start, a nine month running head start. And then I can just uh, get on about it. And so uh, that's what I anticipate. I believe that I'm, you know, uh, when I take a look at it, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to do very well for myself. Uh, I know I have, you know, um, I've, you know, uh, I would anticipate that I do very well for myself. And the thing about me is that, uh, you know, the whole, you know, uh, and I've talked about uh, generating equity, right? And in terms of a, a broader reality, it's like, a, why do you want to generate equity? You know, when I talk about making money, why is it so important to generate equity, right? The, the reason that you want to generate equity is because in terms of uh, from what I have seen when it comes to money, after a certain point, the money does not buy you anything else. All right, uh, like uh, when you be when you uh, come to understand this, when you understand this, that when you have equity, you can you can hold your equity as collateral for anything, and it's like if you want to go and you want to buy yourself a piece of land, how do you do that? Right, I've already talked about this. So you know, you go to the bank, you find a piece of land that you want to buy, you take it to the bank, and then you talk to the banker about it. If you want to buy cattle or you know whatever uh, an asset for your business, uh, you know what's something that I'm looking to do in terms of buying assets for my business? I'm looking to hold the equity evaluation of my business as collateral for a business line of credit and if i have a business line of credit and i am purchasing assets for my business and i also have a you know a uh, a llc or or i don't know i'm going to talk to the uh, the tax people about uh, starting myself a corporation it's like you know if it's like if i have a corporation or if i have an llc then i have a business line of credit and then i purchase uh you know assets for my business via that that uh that a uh, line of credit then uh you know am i uh legal Legally protected from bankruptcy, right? Am I, are my, you know, uh, are my personal assets legally uh, protected from bankruptcy and stuff like that? I'm gonna talk about my, uh, I'm gonna talk to my uh, my accountant about that, right? And so, you know. Uh, I've already uh, talked about all these things, right? It's like if you want to start a business, uh, you know, how do you do it, right? You go uh, on Google and you just type in uh, how do I start an LLC and then you uh, type in the state that you live in, right? Like for me, it would be Texas. How do I start an LLC in Texas? And then it will take you to the... Uh, this thing and then you just go to the uh the secretary of state and then you file for your uh your business license and then uh congratulations you pay a fee and then there's your llc right uh if you want to buy a piece of land how do you do it uh you know uh you know, you talk to uh, several different banks because every bank has different lending standards, right? I've talked about this too. Uh, I talk about that all the time, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, what are some questions that you can ask? And uh, in terms of if you, uh, you know, one of the best loans that uh, you can take from my under, from what I have personally seen is to leverage your cash flow, right? And I've talked about this strategy all the time. I call it making the money first. Once you make the money, you can show the bank that you make the money and then you can hold that as collateral. You can actually leverage your income. Right. If you can prove to the bank that the, and the magic number is what, three and a half times. Right. If you can prove to the bank that you make three and a half times more money, let's say that the bank is looking to give you a loan for whatever, for three hundred and fifty thousand. And uh, the for the three hundred and fifty thousand dollar loan, they want, uh, you know, uh, whatever, uh, three thousand five hundred dollars a month. Right. Let's, or you know, it's not three thousand five hundred. It's 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 about three thousand. Let's say they they want a two thousand five hundred, three thousand dollars a month, whatever it is. It's like if you want to take that loan for three hundred and fifty grand, and they want a two thousand five hundred, and you've talked to the banker, they want three thousand, two thousand five hundred to three thousand dollars a month, and uh, you know you've talked to the banker. 
uh, and uh, they're willing to finance the entire deal for you, right? Uh, but you're gonna have to pay two thousand five hundred dollars a month to three thousand dollars a month, something like that. And uh, you know, uh, and uh, you spoke to the banker, and uh, you know, what's the magic ratio, right? You want to do about three and a half times that. So if it's set, if it's two thousand five hundred dollars a month, you want to make about nine thousand dollars a month. If it's three thousand dollars a month, you want to make about a uh, eleven thousand dollars a month. Right. And so it's like a, if you want to leverage for a deal completely all in its all entirety, that's how you want to do it. And you want to do it in terms of excess, uh, excess cash flow. And then you can leverage your uh, your uh, your earnings for the uh, for the for the loan. And, you know, I've talked about all these uh, various strategies. Uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, you know, and if you're not uh, and, uh, you know, you really want to be in a situation where you are capable of making the money. Right. I mean, like, let's say, uh, you know, or, uh, you know, you can collateralize your uh, your equity for, uh, you know, uh, because I mean, in a realistic uh, situation, I mean, you know, one, you know, I may be one of the few people on the entire planet because it's like me. It's like a, like me. If it's like, you know, I took a loan for three hundred and fifty grand and then for me to get that loan for three hundred and fifty grand, I had to go and make ten grand. It's actually not that hard. Right. It's, it, you know, for me, I can do it. Right. I can go and I can uh, make myself ten thousand dollars a month. It's not that big of a deal. But I understand that for most people that that's not going to be a uh a possibility right and so uh, but i mean either which way whichever way you do it if you don't take a, a finance from the bank then you can take a seller finance right and if you take a seller finance and you uh you know uh, you know you take a seller finance you find a, a good deal on something right you've ran the numbers on the deal and uh you know you've taken a look at the numbers uh fifty thousand times and you've checked everything and uh, everything looks is squared away then you know you can go and you can uh take your deal and then uh, if it's a good deal uh, you know and you've and you've confirmed that and you've actually uh, looked at everything and made sure that it is a very good deal then you can take the deal and if it's not a good deal if it's a deal that you can't do then don't take the deal Right. I mean, I've talked about this all the time. I mean, go and find something else. I mean, seller finance it, uh, you know, uh, seller finance it and then ask uh, and then uh, negotiate a portion of your contract to be a one year non-payment agreement. And, uh, you know, it's like you've seller financed it. So you didn't have to go to the bank. You you got your asset. Your asset is net flow, uh, net cash flow positive, And you can run the business for the first year and uh, collect the money. And then you can use that money as a buffer for your uh, your debt service. Right. You don't go and YOLO the money. You don't go and uh, buy yourself a Ferrari. You don't go and buy yourself a Lamborghini. Right. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, if, if the business is making whatever, like my business, whatever my business makes a. Uh, you know, a 12, uh, let's just say $12,000 a month, it, you know, and then, uh, so that's $144,000 a year. It, you know, if my business makes $144,000 a year and I get the first year, let's say you purchased my business, which I'm not saying you can purchase my business. You can't purchase my business. I mean, if you purchase my business, you would bankrupt it immediately. You know, but it, let's just use my business as an example. And let's say that, uh, you know, my business makes a net positive of $12,000 a month and you purchase my business and you get a, a, a one year non-payment agreement on it. And then, uh, you know, for that first year, you make one hundred and forty four grand. And then, uh, you know, then uh, and then after that, you start having to make monthly payments. And, uh, you know, and it's like, a, you know, it's five thousand dollars a month or whatever. And you got your, uh, you got a, you know, a stockpile of some money to float your debt service for at least a couple of years. And then you take a look at the overall market, right? You're taking a look at the overall economy and you anticipate that rates are going to go lower over the next few years. I would anticipate that rates go lower, right? And I've talked about this, uh, you know, in terms of uh, how do I do a deal right now, uh, you know, uh, I think that the best way to get a deal right now, uh, the best deals to do right now is you want to get a little bit under market uh, market evaluation. You want to get a little bit under market uh, market value because uh, the high interest rate environment, you know, uh, the economy is not doing very good. Uh, the high interest rate env environment is kind of putting a cap on the uh, on the market. And uh, we may be in a situation where, uh, you know, uh, prices fall. Right. We might have asset prices fall. But if asset prices fall over the broader uh, broader economy, then the asset prices are tied to the uh, the uh, the long term bond, right? The long term bond is a counterweight to the uh, to the overall assets, and so uh, you know, even if asset prices fall, interest rates will fall. And if you had uh, you know uh, if you had a ten uh, percent right, you had a ten percent. Uh, 
you know you got a 10 percent uh you know under market uh, under market appraisal value for your uh, for your deal you got a 10 percent uh discount on it because of the high interest rate environment even if the uh even if the uh the market falls even if broader assets fall let's say a uh, five uh, ten percent you still have not lost any money and then you can refinance your loan right i you know i'm probably going to end up refinancing my loan right i'm you know i, I would i would i would uh, i'm anticipating that i refinance my loans uh you know refinance my loan and then uh pay this uh pay for this property here in about two years but uh, in reality i mean you know um if interest rates continue to go higher the only time you know the the bond market is tied to the broader asset market on a counterbalance and so if the uh, the asset uh, if the bond uh, you know if the interest rates are going higher even if i have a high rate as a fixed rate the only you know the uh, the reason why the uh, the interest rate would be going up would be because the uh, the broader asset market is inflating uncontrollably, right? Like if we have uncontrollable inflation and you have a fixed rate, even if it's at a relatively high rate as of right now, the appreciation of your assets will negate that, uh, you know, negate that problem. And so all in all, in terms of the broader economy, I would highly suggest investing into something. But when you go and invest into something, make sure you understand your investment. That is the the most, uh, most important thing, right? I can give you the information that i use etc cetera, etc cetera, and i can uh, give you uh, the best information that i can but at the end of the day you know you know you're gonna have to go and you're gonna have to understand your investment by yourself i mean whatever there, there are a lot of things to invest in and uh you know there are a lot of things to potentially invest in right and i've already talked about in terms of an investment what makes a good investment you want something that has a very 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 large market cap you want something that has a lot of money involved in it like real estate uh you know business equity is another good one you know if you have a business that is valuable or excuse me if you have a business that makes money that business is valuable and it's not valuable to just you it is valuable to effectively everybody and so uh, granted that you're not an idiot right and so uh you know granted that you're not dealing with an idiot that that business is valuable and that and that business is now equitable and it's like a printing money out of nothing right i've you know i've already said that for me it's like a you know when i make money via equity it's like i print money out of nowhere i essentially uh you know create money out of nothing and you don't have to start a business to to uh, you know generate business equity if you purchase a business that is already uh, you know doing well and then you make it do better then your earnings uh then your uh then your uh equ the equitable evaluation of your business is going to be a multiple of the earnings amount and so if you have a business and you bought a good business and then you turn that good business into a great business by making more money on that business then you know then the uh then the evaluation for your business is higher now and you have also now also created equity you know by making the business better and so and it's like at the end of the day if you're net positive cash flow you know like me uh, i would say that i'm gonna go a net positive cash flow about a 10 uh, about 10 twelve thousand dollars a month and i have about two million dollars worth of equity maybe a little bit more uh, you know that that number is going to be going up substantially you know, you know, like when you have a couple of million dollars in equity and your net positive cash flow, like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month, you can effectively buy anything on the entire planet. All right. Uh, you don't you don't need ten million dollars. You don't need, uh, you know, you don't need to be making five million dollars a year. You don't need to make ten million dollars a year. You know, if you uh, if you if you make, uh, you know, if you make uh, five thousand dollars a month more than you spend every single month and uh you know uh you uh you also have let's say uh one million dollars in equity let's just cut all my numbers in half right let's say that you have a uh, five thousand dollars a month of net positive cash flow and you also have a uh you know a million dollars in equity you can effectively already buy anything on the entire planet all right i mean you know granted that you're not going to go and like buy drugs or you're going to go and buy uh you know a massive amount of you know uh, gambling or whatever you know like uh, me like if if you go into the bank and you say hello banker uh you know uh here is my asset portfolio and here is my uh, my cash flow uh you know and i am looking to go and purchase myself a hundred more cattle then they will, you know, then the, the banker will look at it and they will give you the money, right? I mean, you can hold your business equity as collateral and get yourself a business line of credit. And then you can just float your debt service with your, you know, 
you know but uh, you know granted that you don't go and like buy yourself a you know five lamborghinis or something right i mean it's like if you do and if you do something reasonable like you don't go and buy yourself like a boat or something i mean you know it's like if you're you know i've always said that the best thing to do with money is to put it into assets right you really want to be taking your money and putting it into assets you know, uh, and in reality, you want tax deductible assets that you can knowledgeably appreciate. And when you have tax deductible assets that you can knowledgeably appreciate and you can do that, uh, you know, knowledgeably and you actually have an understanding of how to do it, then that is when you become a money printing machine like me. Like, uh, that's how I make my money. Like when you, uh, you know, I'm actually in a situation as of right now where the amount of money that I am going to make, you know, the amount of money that I'm making is about to go on a vertical scale. All right. Uh, you know, it's about to go on a vertical scale. All right. I'm just going to say it, you know, and uh, this week I'm actually putting in my security systems. You know, uh, you know, if y'all been watching uh, me for a while, you y'all know that I really like my security systems. I'm going to be putting in my security systems this week. I've just got my field fertilized. And uh, starting uh, here in about a week now, in about seven days, I'll be bringing cattle into this field. And so, uh, you know, that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.